wedding homilies. Weddings are wonderful occasions. They are so wonderful and joyful that no one remembers that they are also worship services. God is often forgotten in the festivities around weddings. That's where you come in, preacher. Your job in a wedding is to introduce God into the proceedings. This is done in a variety of ways, by your choice of music and what ritual is allowed in the service, in the approval of the vows, in premarital counseling, but mainly it is done in the short sermon that's part of the wedding, which is called the wedding homily. It is that moment in the wedding where people pause in their festivities to hear from God. A wedding message is vitally important to the service. Here are some suggestions on having a good wedding message. A homily is a term used for a short sermon, particularly to be done at a wedding. Remember, the wedding message is the only time some people hear preaching. Many attendees to a wedding never enter a church at any other time. That's why it's important that you do your best to present the Word of God in the best light, especially at a wedding. What do you put in a wedding homily? Well, first, present the nature of a Christian marriage. Explain that there's a difference between a wedding and the ordinance or sacrament of Christian marriage. The fact that you are doing a wedding at all as a pastor means that on some level the couple must want a Christian marriage. If not, don't even do the service. Second, since people in the church are not familiar with the nature of a Christian message, make sure to include the biblical basis for what makes a Christian marriage different from a secular marriage. Explain to them the biblical basis of the family in marriage. And third, Present the gospel. It is important that the message of Jesus as God's Son died and resurrected for our sins should be part of any presentation of the Christian faith. Whether or not the couple understands this, weddings are a presentation of the Christian faith before an unbelieving world. Let me say a few words about presenting the gospel at a wedding. A pastor must realize that people are not coming to a wedding to expect to hear the gospel. For that reason, a direct approach may often be counterproductive. If a pastor or a preacher preaches a hellfire and damnation message at a wedding, he may, go, he may go home satisfied because he's preached the gospel, but generally he's going to offend most of those who came expecting a lighter occasion. So the best way of presenting the gospel at a wedding, in my opinion, is to make the gospel indirect at the wedding. Tell about how Christ can help a marriage, how Jesus is the model of sacrificial love, or how the center of a good marriage is faith in Christ. Let them know what Christ can do for them. Make them hungry for the gospel. Jesus often did this, not telling everything in public meetings, but inviting people to seek him out later for the rest, to whet their appetite, and to bring them in closer where you can be more direct. In this way, a pastor can plant the seeds of the gospel at a wedding, which may result in fruit later on down the road. Let me talk about personal words about the bride and groom at the wedding, those little uh, anecdotes and touches that make the wedding personal. Let me say a few words about that. First of all, many pastors like to include personal comments about the couple, couple getting married, and this is fine, but only up to a point. I think a pastor needs to be careful about this. In a wedding, you are not there because you know the person or in, who is you, who's getting married. You're not, it's not the relationship of the couple that causes you to be there. But at that moment, you represent God. You are not simply yourself, but you're a representative of God. So we must be careful to allow ourselves to be that representation. We represent divine authority at a wedding, not because of our personal bonds with the bride and groom, but because that is who God called us to be. So we may include personal remarks, but we must always remember that we are speaking for God at a wedding and not for ourselves. And we need to stand before the couple, not simply as ourself, but as a representative of God. Wedding vows today are often said without meaning and given flippantly. It's important that we let people know in our actions and our behaviors that what they're entering into here is a divine covenant. And for that reason, it must be taken with the utmost seriousness. 
Speaking as a pastor who's performed literally hundreds of weddings, I can tell you that there is nothing more enjoyable than the performance of the ordinance of marriage. But when I stand before a congregation, I'm not there to entertain or merely enjoy the festivities. I am there with a serious purpose. It is the most joyful day of a couple's life, and I am there to represent God in that day. Don't waste the opportunity to display God as the center of a marriage and the center of a home and the center of life.